Have a look at what malware is and trojans, viruses and worms. Let's look at three more types of malware in this video. First of all, a rootkit is probably our hardest to understand of our three new ones, to be honest. Because, well, not necessarily because, but a complicated factor is a rootkit tends to be actually a collection of malware. So it's not just its own type necessarily. Often it's a collection and might have a trojan or virus as part of it. I mean, modern malware is all quite complicated. It's not always as simple as being one type anyway, but rootkits are usually a collection. They are often used to create a backdoor. So they do have some association with spyware maybe, which we'll look at later in this video, but a backdoor is another way for an attacker to gain access to your computer and control it and see your files and so on. What is interesting about a rootkit is they tend to work at lower levels than other malware because they are infiltrating the operating system, the OS, or hardware drivers. A driver is a small program which enables an external device to work with your computer. So you might plug in a mouse to your computer and it says you are installing a driver. You might plug in a camera or a printer and it installs a driver, just a way to get it to work with your computer. And the operating system is our main bit of software which works with our hardware and enables us to run applications. OS's are things like iOS or Windows or Linux and so on. The two main consequences of rootkits often working at this lower level is they're very hard to detect and to remove. They're really sort of hidden much better than other malware because it's at this lower level. Also, because it has access to the OS and possibly even hardware drivers and the device themselves, it means the attacker tends to have more control of the system. So a virus or a Trojan might have only so much access, but a rootkit working at this lower level has more control usually. So just to explain what I mean by lower level, because you might not know what I mean by that, it doesn't make a lot of sense. So what I'm saying by this is we can often imagine a computer to be different layers and the lowest level, the lowest layer is a hardware layer. So our physical devices, which are comprising our actual computer, things like the CPU, the processor, a graphics card, a GPU, storage devices like a hard drive, a hardware device at the bottom. Sitting above it, we have software. So the operating system is our main bit of software, like Windows, really controlling our whole system. It sits between the hardware and other applications like spreadsheets, browsers, and so on. So this pink layer at the very top, this application layer, is where the normal quote-unquote malware would tend to sit, tend to exist. So for example, we might have alongside a spreadsheet software or a web browser, might have a Trojan sitting here as well. It's where most malware tends to sit. So at this level, if it wants to access anything important, it's got to go via the OS to get to the hardware. So it's got, got to go via the OS to get it to work. Whereas a rootkit would tend to sit lower. So it would tend to sit, embed itself somehow into your OS, into possibly some of your hardware devices and so on, which gives it much more control because it's not having to go through the OS to get to the hardware. It's much closer to the software and hardware it wants to be able to manipulate. Ransomware is another type of malware which has come up a lot in the last few years. It's really started to come into action, I'd say. But a ransom generally, you might have heard of this term before, is some money demanded for the release of something. So commonly you might hear about it in a movie or TV program where somebody is kidnapped and the kidnapper wants a ransom. They want money in order to release a person who's been kidnapped. Very nasty, of course, but this also can apply to software, unfortunately. So ransomware is this type of malware which threatens to block access to files or release personal information unless this ransom is paid, unless this sum of money is paid. So this malware is either saying to the victim, well, you're not going to be able to access your files until you pay me money, or if you don't want me to release this personal information, you better pay me money. That's how they're making money and how they are doing this criminal act. I would say blocking access in the last few years has been much more of a common theme, and often access is blocked by encrypting the files. So this ransomware gets installed, it gets executed, and it initially encrypts the files, making them unreadable to anyone except the attacker. And often, in order to reduce tracing by the police and so on, they will often ask for ransoms in cryptocurrency. You don't need to know what this is, but you may have heard of Bitcoin. It's an untraceable way of paying money, and that's how often this attack plays out. To give you a relatively recent example of this, in 2017, the NHS in England was affected by a major cyber attack where allegedly North Korean attackers managed to install ransomware on computers in hospitals and doctor surgeries and so on. And it was ransomware and it locked all the files and demanded $300 per computer to unlock all of these files. They wanted that money through Bitcoin. Now, if you paid the money, paid the ransom, 
usually they don't bother to decrypt it because why would they? They're an attacker, they don't really care. But this actual attack managed to exist because there was a vulnerability in some software, in some old software, so software, an old Windows operating system from the 90s. The NHS hadn't bothered to update it, which is a massive mistake, a massive weakness, and so the attackers could exploit it. And this was a worm as well, so often modern malware is a mix of different types. It was a worm, so it spread over networks very quickly. That's why it was such a serious attack. Uh, the final type of malware we're going to look at today is spyware. So spyware is really even alluded to a few times already in this video, in the last video. Spyware is collecting information about you without your knowledge. So like a spy would, it's doing it just via software. So you don't know about it, of course, you're not given permission. It's done without you knowing about it. So for example, a specific type of spyware is a keylogger. A keylogger does what it sort of says, which is recording everything you type on your keyboard. Things like passwords will be recorded by the keylogger and can be sent to the attacker. It's obviously very useful information for them. Another example of spyware is something called camfecting, where webcams are infected and people are able to, attackers are able to watch people through webcams. This is a picture of Mark Zuckerberg, who invented Facebook, owns Instagram and so on. He posted this photo a few years ago and it's interesting because his laptop is behind him and you can see on his laptop he first of all has got some tape over his webcam and also over on the actual side of his laptop over the microphone. Uh, he's doing this I'm sure because he's worried about malware, worried about spyware which could be on his computer and collecting information about him. If he blocks out the webcam and blocks out the microphone it reduces the risk of an attacker being able to listen in or watch him as he's working. From an attacker's perspective you don't need to be a billionaire to have personal information like a password or bank details and so it's in the attacker's interest to record this information and use it against you.